Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is part two of uh, chapter three in subject CT4, which is all about mark of chains. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at what are simple random walks, what is stationary distributions, what is irreducibility, periodicity, long-term behavior, estimating transitional probabilities, and the chi-square test on triples. So it's a lot to get through. Um, be sure to check out the very first video where we spoke about, you know, mark of chains, transitional probabilities, their distributions, uh, time homogeneous, uh, transitional matrix, and the no claim discount systems. So check out that video, and yeah, let's get on to simple random walks. A simple random walk, it, the, the name of that thing explains exactly what it is. It's simple in the sense that only two things can happen. You can move up um, or you can move down. Or in this case, you move up or you stand still. If I was negative one, then you can move down. It's random, which means we have no idea what's actually going to happen. Um, or we can't know the exact certain path that's going to be taken. And it's a walk. And we know that with a walk, um, as time progresses, there's movement. So we have our state space. And this is all the various values that could happen and from negative infinity all the way to infinity. And we have xn, which is the summation, and this is what makes the walk interesting, is that we're gonna be summing up a whole bunch of random variables, and the random variables are denoted by yi, and they are identical and independently distributed, and they can either be a one, um, well these values can be basically anything, um, and they have a probability, so they can either go up by one, or they can go say the same, or you can even have a negative one there, and you have your probabilities. If it was a symmetrical simple random walk, then both of these would be 50%. Um, they contain the mark of property because our increments are independent, and what's nice is um, it, it basically forms a mark of chain because it has a discrete state space and a time set. Now, with our random walks, you know, you can have anything like that, they do their whole little thing. We could introduce some boundaries. Um, there could be a reflecting boundary, which means when it gets to a certain point, um, it reflects, you know, bounces back. Um, a case of this could be a, like a share. A share cannot go negative. So whenever it hits zero, um, it has to other. Okay, share is a bad example because that's actually an example of a mixed state, um, or it could even be absorbing. Okay. Reflecting, think of a mirror, when it hits something, it has to come back. Absorbing is when, when it hits, once it hits a certain state, it stays in that state forever. So an example is death is an absorbing state. Um, I guess when a stock hits zero, that would be an absorbing state, not reflecting. Apologies for that. Um, also, like let's say if you win a game and you hit the max score, that's an absorbing state, you've won the game. But then you could also have a mixed state where, you know, there's a percentage chance that it becomes reflecting and another percentage chance that it is absorbing. Um, let's look at stationary distributions. These things are quite phenomenal. Um, well, yeah, this is the, the formula. And just that formula there, you must be saying, you know, what's going on there? Um, pi is equal to pi times p. And that is the interesting thing about um, stationary distributions. So pi represents the distribution, okay, or stationary distribution. And p is our matrix, so our transitional matrix. So for example, there's our matrix there. That's the, the mark of chain drawn out. And what happens is when we take our distribution, so a stationary distribution, in this case, you know, we've got our four, four states, it says, um, so much percentage starts in state one, so much percentage start in state two, so much percentage start in state three and state four. If we multiply this by a transitional probability, we will get the exact same um, distribution as we started off with. So it's, I think to, if you're getting confused with the mathematics, think of it as you have this system where, you know, stuff's happening, things are shooting off in all different directions. If we were to leave this for a very long time, the system would it would settle into a certain pattern. So even though things are all moving around, at any given point there'd be so many in certain things. This happens with traffic, um, and I can't think of any other examples just off the top of my head. But it is quite a beautiful system. 
you can see I've got a just a little example of how you know you times it by that and you can work it out this is where the mathematics gets in but remember this video I just want to talk about the topics in a broad high level overview so we're not going to get too much involved with that otherwise these videos will take forever um, irreducibility okay this is a, a, a probab uh, not a probability this is a property that says if any state j can be reached eventually from any other state i so if I can get from this state to any other state, so if all my states are connected somehow, you can see 1 and 4 are not directly connected, but I can get to 4 by jumping to 2 and then 2 to 4 or jumping from 3, 3 to 4. Then, um, then it's known as irreducibility. If I can't do that, then it's called not irreducible. Okay, and so think about it. If a state is absorbing, you can't really go from that state back to another state, so therefore it will not be reducible. Then you have this thing called periodicity, and this is a little bit tricky. Well, I, I struggled a little bit with this one, okay? What it says, it says state i has a period of d which is greater than 1 if a return to state i is only possible in a number of steps that is an integer multiple of d. Yeah. Some of you will be like, oh, Mark, that's so simple. Others of you are going to be like, what on earth did you just say there? And the best thing to do is just to have a little bit of an example. So let's look here at this mock, this little yeah, model we have here. Okay, we've got state one and we have state two. Okay, which one is, uh, peri which one has a period or what are the periods? Okay, well, state one can go to state two and then come back to itself, or it can just be in itself, okay? Which means it has a period of one because it, it returns to state one is only possible in a number of steps that is an integer multiple of one. Whereas two would have a period of two because you can go one, two. So you can only get back to it after a multiples of two. Um, so yeah, state one is aperiodic because one is, and remember, our definition says that D has to be greater than one. So therefore, it's aperiodic. It's only possible to stay in one after two consecutive time periods. Um, and then the interesting thing is the chain is irreducible. So every state has the same period. Therefore, state two is aperiodic, which is interesting. And you can see why I'm getting a little bit confused because it doesn't have, we thought it had a state a period of two. But because the reason is, and this is where it gets tricky, is what we forgot to mention is that to get to state 2, we thought, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. But we can keep going around and around and around the circle with number 1, which means I can get back to state 2 in 3, in 4, in 5, in, five, in 6, and 7, uh, different um, steps, because I can go 1, and then I can go 2, 3, 4, and then only come back 5, which therefore means that 2 also has um, only is aperiodic because it has a period of one now it gets really comp I mean this is confusing and we've got like a very simplistic model here so what happens is when you have a really complicated um, you know mark of chain thingamajig like this there's a nice thing to remember and that is if a mark of chain is irreducible then all the states have the same period. And that's quite a cool fact to remember. So you only have to figure this out for one of them and know if it's irreducible, they will all have the same period. Okay. Now, why do we care about this? Because if it has at least one stationary distribution, we know that it has a finite state space. Okay. If it has a finite, oh, if it has a unique stationary distribution, it has a finite, sorry, I'm getting this all confused here. Yeah. Let's let's just take a quick little look and get back to it. Okay. If our Markov chain has a finite state space, okay, then it will have at least one stationary distribution. If it has a finite state space and is irreducible, then we know that it has a unique stationary distribution. However, if it has a finite state space, it is irreducible and is aperiodic then we will know that it will converge to the unique stationary distribution. Now do 
do lots and lots of practice, do lots of exercises on this stuff, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because, um, sure. These, like I said, these things are amazing how whole stationary distributions work together. And that's where we get to basically, we're coming up to the end of the video, like the long-term behavior. So we can see this very simple model, it has a finite state space, you know, it has one and it has two. Something that doesn't have a finite state space would be that random walk that can go on forever, you know, negative infinity all the way to infinity. We showed that it's irreducible because each state can get to each every other state. And we show that it's aperiodic because the period is 1. You know, or you can only get to state 2 if the highest multiple of 1. So even though you can't get to state 2 in one step from 2, it's 2, 3, 4, 5, and their thing that they have in common is 1. Then you can, uh, so we know it's going to converge to a unique stationary distribution in the long term, which means we don't even have to just say what that stationary distribution is to start off with. We can use this and we use simultaneous equations or whatever you want to use, you can work out the answer. So what this means is when this system here settles, okay, two-thirds of it are going to be here and one-third is going to be here. So think of, I mean, I think it, I guess an easy way to think of this is think of these as, um, you know, baskets or balls um, or bowls. There's bowls and there's all these little beads that are dancing between... Um, the two different bowls and these numbers here say that if I'm in bowl one I have a 50% chance that I stay in this bowl and I have a 50% chance to go to bowl number two. If I'm in bowl number two I've got a 100% guarantee that I come back to bowl number one. You put in a millions of beads into the system and what you'll get is after, a lot, after some time you will have 66% um, of the beads will be in state one and 33% um, of them would be in state 2. And this makes sense because when I'm, whenever something's in state 2, it shoots straight back to state 1. When it's in state 1, some of it shoots back to state 2, some of it stays over here. Uh, so you could have figured that out just by looking at it, but when these things become, say, complicated, like, you know, you have four states, that's when the mathematics helps. Um, estimating transitional probabilities, it is quite straightforward. Uh, Nij is the number of times that the sequence Ij is observed in the given data set and then so it's basically you count how many times these transitions happened by the sum of the transitions to something else and that's very intuitive. Something that's a little bit less intuitive is this whole chi-squared test thing. Um, I have not seen this in the exam so don't go too crazy about it. It is quite a, I mean it's got a triple sum on it very interesting formula. Um, the mathematics, I mean, when you actually draw it out and you do an example, it again, it is very intuitive and it makes a lot of sense, but you will be coming across quite a lot of tests in the later chapters of this course. So it's worth, you know, getting your head around it now, but it's nothing too difficult. And yeah, that is the end of part two. You can see why I did it over two videos because otherwise it would be in one very long video. Um, I did mumble a bit in this video, so if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section and I shall address them. Thanks guys for watching. I'm MJ, the student actuary, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers.